Another presidential feud that's running red hot this morning pits the leader of the free world against George Conway, the conservative lawyer who is married to White House counselor Kellyanne Conway. In his latest broadside, the president calls Georgia, quote, stone cold loser and husband from hell. That's what the president chose to tweet this morning. This is after George Conway asserted the president suffers from, quote, narcissistic personality disorder. Our Joe Johns is at the White House. These are two grown men. This is, these are not five-year-olds. That's absolutely right. And what a window this is on some of the tensions that are percolating in the background here at the White House and elsewhere. George Conway, as you know, a top-shelf conservative lawyer of his own right, married to Kellyanne Conway, who is a top advisor to the President of the United States. They've been engaged in this back and forth Twitter war after the President, of course, had his tweet storm over the weekend. George Conway questioning the President's mental fitness, the President firing back, and in a very extraordinary way, actually getting inside the marriage of one of his subordinates here at the White House, uh, which is extraordinary in and of itself. And then you add in the fact that the president has 59.2 million followers on Twitter. Uh, it's a real window. So uh, George Conway this morning uh, responding to the president's tweet with three words uh, punctuated by periods, you are nuts. Uh, he also responded in an interview with the Washington Post and talking about this a little bit, I'll just read it for you. The mendacity, the incompetence is just maddening to watch. The tweeting is just uh, the way to get it out of the way so I can get it off my chest and move on with my life that day. That's basically it. Frankly, it's so I don't end up screaming at her about it, presuming, uh, presumably talking about Kellyanne Conway. So the president has referred to George Conway as Mr. Kellyanne Conway and has suggested as well that George Conway very much wanted a job in this administration. Conway mm -hmm. seems to deny that, suggesting uh, that he withdrew himself uh, from consideration uh, for the job here, which mm -hmm. I believe was the Solicitor General's job. Back to you. Yeah, Joe John, thank you so much. We do have that letter. The Washington Post just obtained this letter. It was in May of 2017. Uh, to the president, let me read it to you. Dear Mr. President, I'm profoundly grateful to you and the Attorney General for selecting me to serve as Assistant U.S. Attorney General for the Civil Division of the Department of Justice. I've reluctantly concluded, however, that for me and my family, this is not the right time for me to leave the private sector and take on a new rule. Kellyanne and I continue to support you and your administration. I look forward to doing whatever I can from outside of government. That was, you know, just about two years ago. So. The president's top advisor, George Conway's wife, Kellyanne Conway, sat down for a wide-ranging interview recently with our Dana Bash. It's part of her Badass Women of Washington series. This was back in February, of course, before all of this latest back and forth between George Conway and the president. And Dana asked her about the back and forth between her and her husband and the president then. Watch. Now we have a president who's actually criticized his own attorney general. For Watch TV and Twitter lately, and one of Trump's most vicious critics is her own husband, George, striking hard and deep with his latest attack on the president's mental state, calling it narcissistic personality disorder. No, I don't share those concerns. And I was getting, I have four kids, and I was getting them out of the house this morning before I got here so, and talked to the president about substance. So We spoke I before the latest drama, but well after her husband started going after her boss, which she says she she didn't see coming. George was so excited, literally crying with joy in his MAGA hat, um, black not red, but his MAGA hat on election night. And so in that way, he's changed. He's changed his opinion on, I guess, matters or the president, the presidency, but I haven't and Donald Trump hasn't. You mean Mr. Kellyanne Conway? The day that he was out on the South Lawn and he called George Mr. Kellyanne Conway struck me sounded like he was sending a message. I thought it was him being Donald J. Trump. It was clever. It's an unusual situation, especially in politics or Washington and certainly in Republican politics for a husband to get his notoriety and power through his wife. It's usually the other way around. It's funny because people say, Jordan, you should come to Harvard and speak, you know, side by side and you should do that. And I think, you know, oh, 
Okay, but then I'd have to give him my power. The president and top allies restrained before are stepping up their response to George Conway on Twitter and rallying around her personally as a mother of four children. These children, you know, they're now 14, 14, 10, and 9. And so they're all old enough to read everything, and they're all old enough to have embraced D.C. as home, which took a while, especially for one of my children. It took a long time because... It's a tough it age is to move. It's a tough age to move down it, and let's face it, it is the rare occasion where a family is moving for mom's job. All right, that interview says so much, even the fact that it uh, happened before the latest back and forth. Jackie Kucinich is with me, the D.C. Bureau Chief for the Daily Beast, and USA Today columnist Kirsten Powers. Good morning, ladies, uh, to Good you morning. both. I'd Good actually morning. like to start with what I think is so relevant and important this morning, and that is um, what Republican Senator of Georgia, Senior Republican Senator Isaac, uh, Johnny Isaacson, is saying here and doing and standing up to the president on. Uh, Kirsten Powers, the rebuke from this Republican senator, um, it's really just him, pub this publicly and this forcefully right now, you have Mitt Romney's and a, Romney and a few others. I wonder if you think he will be followed by the majority of Republicans in Congress. I would be surprised if he is. Uh, I, I don't think that we've seen a lot of appetite in the Republican Party for uh, going after Donald Trump, especially publicly criticizing him. Uh, because of the backlash that they suffer. I mean, we just, we see what's happening right now with, you know, with Kellyanne Conway's husband, George Conway. Um, that's sort of the treatment that people get when they're critical of the president. And so I think that he um, has intimidated them into staying silent for the most part. Jackie, politically, does the president think that these attacks on John McCain actually help him? Or does he not care? I don't know that there's a lot of forethought here um, when it comes to attacking John McCain. Uh, it's pretty clear the president doesn't like him. Uh, and he, it, there has never been a resolution. The president couldn't really win in this situation. John McCain had the last word. Mm -hmm. So uh, the president is known to hold grudges. And uh, this just seems to be a continuation of that, that he just can't let go. The fact that uh, McCain sank the health care bill. Obviously, this goes on well before that happened. But uh, I think the fact that John McCain got the better of him, um, just, you know, the president can't let it go. Yeah, with, with just a thumbs down, right? That, that's all it right. took. Um, but just sticking on that point, Kirsten, for a moment, I mean, the thing is, this is not, this is far from the first time that the president has attacked John McCain so publicly, so viciously, before his death, while he was fighting for his life, and, and now after. And there's a new CNN poll out this morning that shows nearly 8 in 10 Republicans say the president is the one with the best shot of, of winning in, in 2020 in terms of all of the other you know, Republicans who could run. It's a president who has the best shot and that they are supportive of the president. I think 76 percent support of the president. Yeah. So, I mean, do, isn't that evidence that, they, that politically this doesn't hurt the president? Well, it, 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 it seems to not hurt him. I mean, there's also in that poll that, you know, 57 percent of Republican voter, voters are very excited about uh, yes. voting. And that's, you know, that's that says a lot about the support for the president that they feel so, so excited about going out and reelecting him. So I think that, you know, you'd have to ask a Republican to explain this because truly it's it's mystifying to me. Uh, there are some just basic decency issues in the world and one of them is you don't attack people who have just died uh, really for no reason that's the other thing like what's the current problem that John McCain is causing from the grave right it's right. just um, there's not there's not even a reason to be talking about it's just gratuitous it's it's hurtful to his family um, which is a family that has been dedicated to serving this country so it's um, like I said you'll have to ask a Republican to explain this to me well, well, is it, you know the question Jackie can be is the president yeah. sort of haunted by the shadow of John McCain and what he represents in terms of sort of Republican civility yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I, I think this is just an old grudge that the president, he, he can't get beyond John McCain. And, you know, um, your question to Kirsten, I think you know, Republicans I've spoken to that are outside of D.C., 
they'll say they don't like when the president does this sort of thing. They don't like when the president is uncivil. Um, but what they'll point to is his agenda and some of the things that he's actually been able to accomplish and the mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the things that he represents in terms of, you know, their core beliefs. Um, and this other stuff, um, yeah, it, it does it discourage is it discouraging yeah it is hmm. um but i think they just keep on going back again this is just the folks what? i've spoken to but can i, to I mean can i just say something about that yeah, though the board doesn't, i'm not I, i'm just telling i'm just reporting what i want oh I've no no heard. no and i agree i hear the same <laughs> yeah. thing i mean that's what you hear all the time but that would that would explain people saying yeah i'm gonna vote for him again i don't really want to he really upsets me with how indecent he is to other people or bigoted things he says and so yeah i'll vote for him it doesn't explain 57 percent of people being very excited hmm. voting for right. him right 